Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Mitch LaFon here. Please check out my new podcast, Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon, every Monday on the Jericho Network here at Podcast One. I'll be talking to all the biggest names in rock, including Andy Summers from The Police, Poison, Night Ranger, Loverboy, and a lot more. Download new episodes each Monday via PodcastOne.com, the Podcast One app, or simply subscribe via iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No chairs, big on, man. Get it on. Uh, thanks, Max Pat. It sounds like he took some sound from that uh, Trans Am Corvette. And yeah, that was it the, in there. Uh, the Corvette starting up and, uh, and run through in that, yeah. in, that, in that version of the intro. Better than that uh, Roadster we used to have, my Datsun Roadster, yeah. right? Yeah, it's got a little Sounds more a little bang meaner. for the buck. It's bar. got a little more bang. That's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea Hello. over there. Jason Cobb and Pat O'Keefe are uh, both here. The uh, They do safety equipment. Safecraft is the uh, name of the company. We'll get into that. We talked to those guys down at Willow Springs at the race. Good to see you guys again. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Proud to be here. Uh, well, we're proud to have you, man. And uh, it's, it's funny, but uh, Matt was saying, yeah, you guys make equipment that people hope they never have to use. Yeah, we uh, talked about that right at some point. Yeah, you guys do it for motorsports, aviation, uh how marine industrial how did so so first off explain the the full scope and scale of safe craft like and and then what your main main sales are sure so i mean safe craft is a company that's been around about 20 years um primarily focused on motorsports fire suppression uh so so typically nascar imsa car like the trans am you drove that's the historical market for SafeCraft. Um, we also make fire extinguisher, fire suppression systems for forklifts, wood chippers. I mean, you'd be you'd be surprised how many different things could catch on fire. Is uh, you know, it's always funny because when you look at these race cars, especially some of my old race cars, sometimes they'll have the fire bottle and they'll have the one that goes into the engine near the intake, and then they'll have the, some go between your legs. You know, some go in the back spread out all over the place how many like on a race car it seems to me there's like three or four uh, sprinkler heads so to speak yeah where are the where are the best places to put it like you know when you're designing a kitchen they got that triangle you know you want the you want the cooktop here but yeah. not too far from the sink but not too far from the fridge you and know there's probably that, rules the rules. rules yeah what yeah. are the rules well, where do you want them sometimes there are rules and sometimes there aren't right so then people will will plumb them anywhere i think the main thing you need to know is you don't want too many nozzles because you figure if you have a bottle with pressure in it the more outlets you have, the less pressure it's going to go to each one, right? So so we c- typically would sell a kit with three nozzles, and mm-hmm. it's usually driver's compartment, fuel cell area, and engine. But we'll have guys that'll tee off and everywhere. I mean, they got two in the engine, three in the back, two in the driver's compartment. All of a sudden, you pull that thing, and it's just going to, you know, piddle out. Is it... Uh, when By it the com- way, I, I love the business model where all these rules and laws and government and whoever says you have to have this system, so yeah. you have to buy their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, there's just a rule. you got to have fire suppression system on your forklift or your house or... Yeah. Well, not your house. Ha- well, your house is a sprinkler yeah. system yeah. if you live in the hills or whoever, Southern <laughs> California. But the... the So the, the stuff is plumbed in what looks like aluminum uh, tubing to me. Yeah, it's either aluminum or stainless tubing, but... So that's the old style, traditional driver controlled, right? So in your race cars, you probably have a, a handle that you're supposed to pull as a driver. Yeah. Of which most drivers never pull. No. Because if there's a fire, the first thing you do is start screaming and running and putting your window net down and taking your belts off and diving out and doing three barrel rolls, you know, like yeah. uh, Ricky Bobby. But but ultimately, you don't typically pull it. I mean, drivers forget, honestly. They're right. just, it's an emotional situation. Like you've got other things, better things to do when you're trying to get out of the car and yeah. run and throw a fire. I mean, if there's smoke and actual flames in the cockpit, the, the last thing you're thinking about is, is pulling the handle, even if you're the car owner. So what we have what we come out with or what we have now is they're, they're actually automatic temperature sensors at the end of the nozzle. Mm-hmm. So the difference is... The fire sets off the, the fire suppression system, not right. the driver. And 
now I do know something about like commercial residential sprinkler stuff, which is in the movies where the guy sets off the sprinkler system and the whole floor <laughs> floods. It's yeah, not that. Try ice, if which is weird. Yeah, if there's a fire <laughs> machine. There's a fire in the bathroom in the men's bathroom. It goes off in the men's bathroom. It doesn't go off in the boss's office and the men's bathroom. That gotcha. that ruin a lot of mahogany. <laughs> you know? yeah. So is this that same thing? Fire in the engine compartment. It shouldn't be going off inside the, the driving compartment, right? Or how? right, but the the problem with the driver controlled, the old style, the pull handle, it's you're, everywhere. You're setting them all off. I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So these new heads, yep. would go off if there's a fire in the engine compartment. Yeah, the, it will only go off with the fire is at. So the beauty of that is you're getting you know a hundred percent of the agent to the fire. If you use the old style, it's a third to the fire, a third to you, and a third to the, to the fuel, the fuel cell or wherever it might have right. been. Yeah. And yeah. if your engine's on fire and you're okay, why do you want to get sprayed? Well it just makes butt. it more yeah. complicated. Right now you're in a gas yeah. you know, can, a cloud. Can uh the old systems be retrofitted with the new heads? Yeah. Essentially, we could take it, you'd send us back, we'd switch, switch on to a new head. and um, But all that plumbing that you mentioned, the tubing, that's not used anymore. We use, a, it looks like braided uh, brake lines, but it's okay. actually a stainless tube inside of a stainless braid. Mm-hmm. Whereas, whereas our brake lines are usually rubber tubing inside of a stainless braid. Now, the stainless, I'm, I'm guessing that the, the people would think braid for flexibility, like brake lines, but then you think, well, wait, there's a stainless rigid tube in there, so now I'm guessing it's so it doesn't wear through when Correct. you mount yeah, it. yeah, and it's actually corrugated inside the stainless, so it's an oh, accordion, so, so it is it. quite flexible, yeah. So huh. so you've got the flexibility, but really the difference is, is that the stainless tubing, the way those are designed, you know, the difference when you pull the old style, the agent was not in the line. It has to go through the line to get to the nozzle. It was trapped in the bottle. Right. Whereas now, because of the bulb, essentially the same bulb probably right. in here is what's holding back, you know, what you would like see in a... like to be in here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, essentially, um, just like a, like in a commercial fire yeah. um, sprinkler system, that bulb explodes... The agent was being held back by a plunger that's now gone because right. the bulb's gone, right. and it all comes out. So we have to use a different lines. Um, but that flexibility is really there just for ease of installation um, yeah. right. a lot of times. So I, I got a question about um, oh, wet systems, dry systems. What should you use? What's easier to clean up? Which works better? Yeah, so it's a good. So now we're talking kind of installed systems. What we've been yeah. talking about, like, and so there, there's really two different types. There's foam, which is water based, so it's water with soap essentially. Um, and then there's there's uh, what we call clean agent or, or um, gas based systems. It used to be halon was the prevalent one, mm-hmm. and that's not allowed anymore. So there's halon replacement gases. We use a, a, a fluid called Novec. It's made by 3M and amazing stuff. So there's pros and cons to both. The the AFFF or the the foam based system, the water based system, it's good in the fact that it's relatively inexpensive, so it's a good starter system for somebody. The downside is if the nozzle isn't exactly placed to where the fire is, it's like if there's a fire over here and I'm spraying water right over here, it's probably not going to do anything to right. it. Whereas a gas, it gets pulled into the heat of the fire, so right. it'll go through firewalls. It'll find its way to the fire. It'll be because as the fire is using up oxygen, it'll suck it. It just up pulls into it, it right to it. The yeah, other big benefit is is cleanup, right? I mean, yeah. it, with a foam based system, you got water and foam everywhere. With a gas based system, it's it's insane. We could literally spray down this entire panel or your, your sound panel in there, and, and it would be dry within a second with no res- residue. It's really, funny, it's at, mind blowing. At the track, I was talking to the driver about the systems. After talking to you guys, I talked to one of the drivers, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, you got to use this type of system. It works the best." And then you talk to the crew, and the crew's like, <laughs> "That was really messy. That stuff. You'd be cleaning that stuff up forever if you use that whatever type of system." And he goes, "So we like this." Yeah, you know, it's like, "Yeah, but your driver's gonna burn." And they're like, "You were concerned about the car. Yeah. <laughs> Save the car." <laughs> Yeah, save the well, car. and Pat kind of said something earlier. You know, I mean, if you're the driver, you're concerned about getting out. If you're the owner of the car, you're concerned about the car getting put out. You know, yeah. so it's uh, you know, which which one are you more concerned about? Especially at the if you're Ferrari in the in the 24 hour war. That film Enzo oh, yeah. Ferrari is just sort of known for going through drivers. Right, it's like drivers yeah. are the things that you can replace easily. And he's I don't know how many killed. So speaking <laughs> of driving, we were down at Willow Springs. You guys had a guy in Trans Am 3, right? Yep. 
T A three. Tyler we, McQuarrie was driving our we had a Lamborghini uh Super Trofeo in T A three. That Super Trofeo is cool, man. It's, they, they Yeah, that, it's a it's a factory car that Lamborghini built. I mean, it's a factory built car, which is pretty amazing. They yeah. took a Gallardo and made a race car out of it. You know? They had a series with like a like an IROC series with those, didn't they? They had uh, like a spec series. What was it mm-hmm. called? Um, it was just called Super Trofeo series. It, yeah. it was single make series, so everybody had identical cars. Um, and that's really where that car retired out of that that series, and then we picked it up. And luckily, Trans Am it kind of became an orphaned race car. Truthfully, it had no home because it was really built for that single make series. I uh, it's all wheel drive, right? Correct. It's yeah. got about five hundred and change in the horsepower. Five, I don't five seventy. Five seventy. You know, it's mid engine. It's a modern car. I I looked at that car and I thought, yeah, that car seemed like a fun car to drive around this track because I felt like it had. Um, it didn't feel that raggedy. It felt like with the mid-engine and the all-wheel drive and the sort of German meets Italian engineering, it just felt like that'd be a fun m- mixture. Because, you know, it, 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 it feels – I mean, it's, it's an all-out race car, but it, it feels a little more civil than some of the crazier just balls-out stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no question, especially in Trans Am, because the car you were running in TA, they're, I mean, they're crazy, right? You got huge horsepower, but no driver aids, you know, no yeah. ABS, no There's traction nothing, control, all, all these to help you. modern racing things. You can barely things. see out of it. Yeah. Whereas, Rear wheel drive. Yeah, I mean, and, but at least you got a lot of rubber behind that, right? A lot I know, of tire. But we, we were talking about this uh, on uh, on the other show about, uh, you know, Adam's done a bunch of vintage racing, and those are 20-minute sessions, you know, maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes at the most. <laughs> When you're going out there for 75 minutes, it's a it's a huge learning curve because the car really starts to get slippery and, oh, and you yeah. got to drive it. Like you you figure in in your vintage racing, a lot of times your last laps are your fastest laps, and this isn't necessarily the case in Trans Am because now these cars are sliding all over the road. And we saw that across the board with everybody that was going fast out there that their fastest laps were not the last laps. Oh, Pat, no. what happens with the all wheel drive on the Lambo where it's eighty twenty right? I think it's eighty twenty or seventy thirty split. Yeah. Okay, and so as as so it's eighty or fixed. probably seventy to fixed. the rear. Yeah. In, yeah, seventy 30. to the rear. 80, thirty. Eighty sounds a lot yeah. to the rear, and it's yeah. like why bother? But but let's say so seventy in the rear, thirty in the front. Yep. So yeah, not fifty fifty. Yeah. But what happens? Sorry. What happens with the tire wear when you start getting into the 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 problems that Adam was experiencing when? When the the downforce was was taken away in the slower corners and the car started to push, what happens in the Lambo? I mean, Lambo, you, any all wheel drive car has a lot better tire wear than a rear wheel drive car, right? Because they're all for pulling you instead sure. of you're just spinning your tires. Which I don't know how much tire spin you had out there, but but managing or like what you said, it it's a huge difference of driving a sprint race versus an endurance race because it's really one mental. I mean, it's hard. You you hope for those cautions, right. To kind of regroup I for did. a second, you know, you kind of get, get, <laughs> yeah. your, get your brain back again, yeah. but the car gets greasy, slippery, nasty. And, and you don't experience that in a really short race, but, um, but you're right, Jason, in the fact that the all wheel drive doesn't fall off nearly as bad as a rear wheel drive car would. Well, you know, what, what you experience is a uh, lack of experience. <laughs> That's my experience, <laughs> which is uh, you don't know. It, it's sort of like sometimes when there's stuff on the track and you don't know it and you're like, oh, my God, I'm just I'm so loose in this corner. What's going on? Like, what am I doing wrong? Like, well, I'm carrying too much speed or something. It's like, yeah. no, someone's tr- somebody's radiator blew up and you're hitting some stuff. And it, it takes you like two laps or three laps of hitting that same corner and going, what's going on? And uh, when the tires would start to go away. I just thought it was, you know, it's just bad driving, you know, like I'm just, I'm, I'm carrying too much speed into this corner and I, I got to slow it down. I'm not yeah. getting down fast enough. This car's just plowing. It's not turning. And so that's my first thought is always driver error. Like that, that's my first thought, you know, why it wouldn't it be? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so like my first thought is something's going wrong with me driving this car. And then what happens is, is it, it happens again at the same spot. And after about three times, you go, well, I'm not fucking this up three times in a row. <laughs> Something's going on with this car. Like you and, don't want to fuck it up yeah. three times in a row. Yeah, I'm a fuck up, but I'm like a two time. <laughs> yeah, fuck I'm up. not that bad. I'm not a three yeah. time fuck no. up. So I'm like something else. Something's going on, and then you start to notice that 
everybody coming down and going into corner five is almost coming to a stop before they turn left and go up. And they're like, why are they going so yeah. slow all of a sudden? And you realize, oh, they're experiencing this thing too. Yeah. And, and I could just liken it to it's like it started raining in the middle of the race. Like everyone went, woo, slow it down. But then you get on the big fast corners and you have downforce. So everyone's back on it. Everyone's back for on that. It, but yeah. again, for the person that doesn't have experience, my experience is, well, we're washing out at 45, 50 miles an hour. What are we doing at 150? I don't like the way that sounds. But now you're back on it, and it seems to work because of the downforce. And, and your first time out, you don't know how much downforce is happening, how much traction you should be getting as a result of that downforce. You just got to follow everyone's lead. Right. And everyone else is like, yeah. oh, well, yeah, the tires are going, but we got so much downforce, we can go 150 miles an hour, uh, over 150 into the turn, the big sweeper. And it's like, for me, it's like uh, at the top, the tires were washing out at 50 miles an hour. And now I'm supposed to go 158 into this corner because <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to just go straight. Sure. Yeah. I'm not thinking about downforce, especially when you're driving a Datsun 510. <laughs> Normally, you're I not mean, getting it, to 158. It does have that <laughs> little it has lift. That's cool. Yeah. It's got a lot of lift. It's got a lot of lift. Yeah, but it's the opposite have, of downforce. It's yeah. got lift. <laughs> yeah. So you're not thinking about it. But now you would go, okay, the tires are going, but we have so much downforce, we can carry this through yeah. the, the turn. 150 miles an hour in the Datsun 510 would be like, like the race boat where just the prop is touching yeah, the water. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just, like, it would, just it before barely, takeoff. Like, yeah, it would that's just be barely that's touching rotation the ground. Speed. Well, it would lift on that and we experience a lot of that in off-road, which is what I'm in charge of, is our off-road segment at, at Safecraft. And, you know, as as the speeds start to increase, now this thing becomes a big sail, right? Yeah. And, and the wind gets underneath the, the body and it right. starts to lift it. And and so then you add the the, you know, I always call it, it it's, Instead of being two dimensional, it's three dimensional now because you you add bumps to it and and things the unknown right. So as the truck starts to become airborne, and you're pushing air underneath it, it can get pretty interesting. But 150 is pretty rare. Yeah, uh, there are a couple people that claim that their truck will do that. But uh, we, you know, the guy that just won San Felipe, Robin Cacker, and he he did 144 on Diablo, which was is a dry lake bed, you know, like they have out in in the Mint and stuff like that. So. It is possible, but I, I would imagine your guys' asphalt cars get, start to get very happy when they don't have those downforce kits that the that the, the Corvettes yeah. and, the, and the Lambo has and everything. So this is yeah. how Jason and I met was uh, years ago uh, at the SEMA show. After SEMA, um, there's the uh, that Vore off road track that's outside, right. and um, the Roush guys invited me out there to do some some laps in a supercharged Roush Raptor. And mm-hmm. uh, and and Jason was my instructor slash co pilot while we were doing that. And uh it's always you know, it's always like you know, you get in and he's like, Go here, go here, go here, and then you think you're doing well, like lap four or five, you're like, It's good and I'm sliding and it's great and I'm hitting the jumps, I'm going fast. Then he's like, Let's switch. <laughs> Let's switch. <laughs> and then he starts driving, I'm like, Ah, you just took yeah all the wind out of my yeah. sails on that one. Yeah. And but that he kinda got the bug in me on that one. You're like, you know what? It's kind of fun. And I'm like, kind of. I, I know you've done the long, long distance stuff, but we were on the short track with just jump after jump and drop and getting in the turns. And it's pretty crazy. And you keep feeling there's so much body roll and everything that you think you're going to roll it. Right. And you probably will. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but they're, they're fun to drive. But you guys just did a race recently and there was a little bit of a, a <laughs> little bit of a. <laughs> Where, where's the video? Is it on one of your old social media? We yeah. gotta find the. I think, if I you, think anywhere. It's called anywhere. The video's yeah. anywhere. Check, <laughs> check uh, maybe Safecraft's Instagram. Yeah. And you, uh, you guys are on... driving the truck, and then I guess you decided to not drive for a minute and then drive again. <laughs> they basically just like roll the truck and keep going. They rolled it back and up on it. Somebody, somebody had it on camera, like. Outside well, that was qualifying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a closed loop, right? So that was about 300 yards. Were you yards. driving? I was driving. Yeah. 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 see so you're here in one, one piece. One of my glory moments. We, we test our safety gear really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't underestimate the stickers. They hold body work together. <laughs> oh, man. We, we, uh, we, we definitely, it was like 300 yards from the finish of the qualifying lap. 
So there's a wall of people. I mean, there's like 500 people standing you can't see that are right past where I did that. And it was the last little kicker. They'd warned me about it, and I thought I had gone slow enough. And you could, I knew I was in trouble, obviously, right off the right off the face of the jump and, and hope was hoping to save it, didn't. So as I was rolling, I kept thinking, land on all four, land on all four, because I don't want to have to be the guy that gets towed out of here right in front right. of all these people. So you're hoping you get on all four, and you can feel when the car rotates. There's all four. Nope, nope. One more time. Okay, rotate, rotate. All right, you know, all four. So then it was hammer down, and and we finished. We ended up qualifying like I don't know forty something out of seventy cars. I think even with still the roll. With, with, with the roll. double yeah. roll. Well, if you roll and keep going, you're only killing a few seconds. Yeah. I think. <laughs> you know, but there yeah, is, if you're rolling yeah. the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you do the next day for the race. <laughs> yeah. You know, when everything's kind of crushed. The truck, it, it most certainly. Um, it looked different, you know. It drove a little different, you know. And but uh, it, amazingly, how tough those things are. It's uh, it's it's funny that it, it's funny that with racing, you know, modern or vintage or off road or Trans Am or whatever, there's a large embarrassment component to it, which is you don't want to be that guy, you know. You you, it, it's it's funny, but you know the you know I don't really think about safety or well-being nearly as much as i think of making an ass of myself (laughs) and it's like when i went out for qualifying and spun out on the first quarter of the first lap without even driving yet like i was literally just it's still like a parade lap basically (laughs) you're supposed to warm up up your tires (laughs) lap and i spun off the track and i was like i'm not even driving and i'm spun and all i could think of is oh god this is so embarrassing like please don't get the truck out let me restart this car god please don't let me do the thing where i sink into the dirt and i can't get it out of the dirt and it's like i was just like it, it was there was zero thoughts of Anything other than complete and utter humiliation, yeah. and if that truck has to come out, <laughs> and I got to see that guy yelling at me, wrapping around the roll, but no, don't yeah. put the brake <laughs> on. <Yeah. laughs> like, I don't want to see the angry guy. In the... Yeah. You're doing it wrong. He's yeah. already yelling they at you. Already yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, you got the, the car, the car off. You know, yeah, it's... you got the car on, and then two other guys spun in that same I'm corner, so and you happy. felt vindicated. I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, we're going to see uh, uh, the car. So th- you can find this on uh, on Safecraft's Instagram page. We're we'll Jason, roll his, roll his car. Ooh, oh. yeah. Oh, this is you driving that, That's me, right? yeah. yeah. Can You're you, fine. Can You're you fine. hear me? I was uh, revving the engine up while what? midterm yes. roll, trying to get it to, <laughs> to land on all four. Just just keep going. Oh, we're not done yet. So, oh, there you go. So, this, so now you got to go get the hood? You left that out there? We, and... we, yeah. We, we actually got the hood, picked it back up, put it back on the car. So this is where I can do things we're not going to oh, do. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That's uh, I think they call that a pearl in surfing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> front end dip and down, and uh, so, front right end, and just w- watch my uh, rider here. So oh, oh, watch he's him, mad at but, you. Oh yeah, he's like, stop, don't do that. No, don't, but watch this. Right, ready, ready. He's like, go. I'm like, I'm go. going. Go. I know we're going. <laughs> Everything you watch in this video is what I tried to avoid doing when I was out there. See, there's Jason. a wall of people you can't see right as I'm headed towards them, and, it, and I know exactly. And what you you're know saying. that's only going to happen when the people are watching. Oh, yeah. For sure. First oh, thing yeah. I thought, there's about, nobody it, around. Nobody you're stands fine. on a flat surface. No. <laughs> you, you imagine rolling through the air thinking, oh, this is bad in front of a group. That's exactly what you're saying. Like the I humiliation know. factor while you're rolling through the air, you're thinking, oh, this looks bad. And it's all what they want you to do. Anyway, which oh, no, they I, cheer like crazy. I, they I love, love it. it. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about. Uh, I got a question about revving that engine when you're upside down. But first, I'll tell you about the Garage Boss oil pans, drains, and pans, and oh, just the best. These guys. Yeah. Biggest complaint about changing your own oil is the cleanup, and now that is done with Garage Boss. We use these guys, Matt. You were just using them on the uh, Mustang. I right? did. Yeah. You can uh, super easy, by the way. Well, the good thing about Garage Boss is. It's the uh, it's the drain and the pan and the disposal unit. And it's all just one unit. You just drill, you drain it down, put the cap on, take it to the recycling place, yeah. and that's it. You don't have to do the funnel and the transfer and the old milk jugs and the whole mess. They also have uh, disposable tearaway sheets, integrated funnels, and all kinds of good stuff. So it's all all the guys who like doing it for themselves, and and that's all us guys. And you want to look like you know what you're doing in your garage. You uh, use Garage Boss, and uh, it goes right from the oil pan to the drain pan to the recycling center. Super easy, and they have a whole bunch of different products, and they're really cool people. And they're super durable, though. I like the like big, thick plastic. Like You can yeah. step on them and kick them around, and they're good. Yeah, I mean— 
don't do it just because people think you're a maniac. <laughs> garage doors yeah. open at night, lights jumping on. on. Jumping on my garage. It's my new boss. trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> just go to Amazon.com and just search Garage Boss, B O S S. Go to Amazon.com, check that out. Uh, I know motorcycle guys, when they get some air, will put a few revs into the bike and try to straighten it show. out. Or, <laughs> they'll get that back wheel going and yeah. pull their back end down a little bit or pull the front end down a little or whatever we, it does. We had that conversation with Tanner Faust about when he was jumping, you know, doing like the loop to loop and jumping his cars his for this wheel. stunt thing, his Hot Wheel cars. And he said he changes the angle of the car by either throttling or braking that momentum of the wheel. For sure. Yes. It's, a I, of, it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of momentum. Of it seems like a lot of work to be doing in the air as well. But. I don't know what you're doing when you're upside down, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this one, I swear to God, I, I hit the ass thinking, if I time this right, when my wheels hit, and if I'm on the gas, it should propel the car forward versus sideways, right? Oh. Which I'm completely upside down hitting the gas. So obviously I mistimed that. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I did, uh, I did the stadium super truck racing. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that last yeah. year it's it's um and so there can you know we're jumping 200 feet off of those wow. ramps and so there most yeah. certainly is sometimes you go off it and you and you have to go off on the gas because if you go off off the gas it kind of bucks the truck right, right. and you're just staring at it you're like oh no and then you're just full of the wood you're just like lift the nose a little bit and and well, the same thing if you start sailing you just tap the brake and yeah you know are they carrying those down at at long beach they're doing an exhibition this like, weekend exactly yeah this coming yeah. yeah this weekend uh, i'm gonna go out there right Friday, saturday you know when you talk about the the wheel moving and using that as momentum in the air nobody does that better than the monster truck guys because they've got <laughs> so much weight and just recently like in the past couple weeks they did the first ever front flip so front flip. They're this doing backflips in monster sure, trucks, yeah. and he did a front flip, and it's it was insane. epic. It was epic. Yeah, so yeah. I sent that video to Pat yeah. uh, right away because... Like, Pat, can you do this next time? Well, this weekend. Ironically, I'm driving a monster truck for the first time this weekend. Are you? Are you? Yeah, yeah, and so Jason's like, can you do that? And I said, are you kidding me? I said, no. <laughs> I mean, it's, I can crash well, but that's just spectacular. It, it, it's know? it's weird. Like, I don't even know how you set it up, and he does the front flip, and you're like, I don't know if he did that I don't, on purpose. I don't, he couldn't have done that on purpose. But everything in that is planned. He even, Everything, it's he like even a downside WWE match. It. He landed on the yeah. downside of the jump, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't think that those planets align again. What is the monster truck you're going to be driving? So we, uh, <laughs> why not? Right? It's one of those kind of things you keep checking bucket list items. Baja 1000. You know, uh, yeah. this and that. So. I've always wanted to drive a monster truck, so we hooked up with the Traxxas um, Monster Truck Destruction Tour and decided to... Isn't that the most... <laughs> just watch the idea. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire that life. That basically is like when the guy throws up the 31-footer and it banks in for three, yeah. and it's like, you weren't banking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I called by, yeah, yeah. was definitely banked. It's like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> that shot was off by four feet, yeah, and yeah. it banked in mercifully. It's but like, I'm no. You, that guy always go, no, I call and I shoot bank. Oh, yeah. I call yeah, bank, yeah. man. But that guy, you, good credit to the Monster Jam marketing team, man. Oh, they yeah. went... They they went full motion on oh, that yeah. thing. They're like, we did the first front flip. And the guy who's driving is probably like, what? I yeah. didn't even remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So well, and kudos up. to the fans. I mean, the fans knew right away that kind of history had been done. It kind of like like the Tony Hawk thing, right? Right. So, I mean, they if you watch them, and I'm not a monster truck guy. Well, this weekend I am. <laughs> but, uh, the uh, you know, w- as soon as he lands it, I mean, the place just erupts. They know that, you know what they've seen. But... I think that was total luck, and in, in, you know the planets aligning. Yeah, but now but everyone's going to try it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try it. Right? Right. 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 So <laughs> what are you what are you driving? What truck are you driving? It's the Safecraft sponsored um, monster truck, and it's in the Traxxas Monster Truck Destruction Tour. Right, so it's not. That's um, what is it? Monster Jam, I think it is, and yeah. So it's a separate tour. But I, uh, I don't know about any type of racing or motorsports event where destruction is in the title. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like that's. Rough. Is it uh, <laughs> so? Those things are all all wheel steering or the rear rear yep, steers rear steer is where as well. they have like have like that mid engine. Yep, you have a toggle switch to turn the rear tires. Right. right. So you, you you drive the fronts with your steering wheel, and you have a toggle right left to drive ah, the rear steer. So right. you got to remember you. You, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. if I'm not on video crab walking, because that means right. my brain got confused and I turned both the same direction. Right, you know? right. Yeah. But um, now, do you, is the seat attached to the frame or are you just sort of suspended with like a no, bunch no, of bungee yeah. cords? Yeah, you should be. Yeah, yeah. Right? There a are big both. Bubble. There is that system. Yeah. Right? A yeah. bubble. Yeah. No, I think we're just hard mounted in there and, and we're using the wheel travel that it's got. Um, I think 1,600 horsepower. So, so yeah. there's like a, a sort of mid ship. 
uh, big block, blown mm-hmm. something, alcohol something, like a top fuel engine. It's got, but, like, but it's, it's got to work. It's got to work. You yep. know, I mean, it's got to work for numbers of runs and stuff. Oh, yeah. So it yeah. can't be full out balls to the wall. We got to rebuild it after five minutes. It's, yeah, it's, it's got to be drivable. Yeah, I think they're. I mean, they're sixteen hundred horsepower, two speeds, um, and and you know, it's only a. 90 second type you know right. you're, but in but you're on it i mean it's full throttle full brake full throttle full brake so you're you're beating on them pretty good you know the scary part for me and not to make this worse for you is like when you're doing <laughs> stadium stuff you you you're just constantly thinking i'm surrounded by people i don't want right. to throw a wheel or drive like a monster truck's going to drive into the audience if it wants to Oh, again, you know? I, I'm, I would be more concerned, like Adam said earlier, it's the humiliation factor yeah. of going in the first thing, just rolling just, like a you slow you can't move it. Which and way then, they need, then they need the big tractor to get me back if yeah. my 90 yeah. seconds is up. That's less concerned than the wheel going in the crowd for me. Yeah. <laughs> He's all right with it seems like only, some people. Uh, he doesn't want to embarrass himself. It seems like only yesterday when I blew a hole in the side of the Roadster block yeah. and uh, at moment. Coronado at the end of uh, the straightaway, and I just... I just coasted out of harm's way. Like, I was like, I'm going to get, this is the end of the straightaway. Yeah. And everyone's turning in, and there's nothing but cones. So I'm just going to keep coasting, like, off into the distance, because I don't want some guy to, like, have s- some issue and come plowing into me at 125 mm-hmm. miles an hour, or whatever mm-hmm. their top speed is at the end of the whatever. There's but, an embarrassment factor as well. Out of bar- sight, out of mind. <laughs> yeah. You're a half a yeah, mile away. I'm going to keep yeah, going. The tow truck guy showed up, and they're like, what the fuck are you doing <laughs> out here? And I'm like, I, I was... And you've dragging an oil I'm for half a mile. I'm getting as far away from the tracks. Like, yeah, well, Jesus Christ, you're in the next county. we got to fucking haul you all the way back. Like off the island in the water, <laughs> yeah. off Coronado. This is why I picked off-road racing, is I drive away from everybody. You yeah, know, yeah. get out in the middle of nowhere where no one can see my mistakes. <laughs> yeah, That guy was genuinely mad. He was so... They <laughs> should. Uh, they should have some sort of policy of, about the tow guys not verbally abusing. <laughs> the driver's uh, already in a bad enough state. You right, know what yeah, I mean? He I just know, put a hole in his engine. I, I got a, all yeah. I know is something went bang right. under my hood, and I got yeah. a first lap. I'm not in a good mood. Why Why the verbal? Oh, Chris has got video. Why the verbal abuse? <laughs> Chris yeah, has got photos. Look at the size of that thing. Well, you could put oh, a oh, smoke. There's a dime there's, for scale next to the There's a dime. Yeah, 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 that. So that's like a softball? Oh, there's like an a, orange? Good. Yeah, there's yeah. a full... Look how what, perfectly rounded like it most is. Most times when people say, I blew a hole in the side of the block, they're not talking about a large, perfectly a round perfectly hole round, in yeah. the side of the block. I mean it when I say I blew a hole yeah. in the side of my block. Looks like a piston. So <laughs> see the what, whole piston a piston directly was involved. Yeah. There was, there was a, a piston, piston involved. Yeah. It, was, it was a little more than that. But Look, What yeah. happens when you have all this vintage stuff and you do that, the stuff isn't on the shelf. What do you do? You you wait six months and get a part and wait another six months to put it in the car. and <laughs> Yeah, and go, yeah, find the block and then argue with the engine builders. Like, oh, you should have checked the gauges. <laughs> like, on the first <laughs> yeah, on the the first lap. On the first lap. lap. Yeah. Yeah. lap. Yeah. You should have seen that I didn't tighten any of the journals, man. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. You, you should have known I didn't yeah. tighten the mains. Yeah. Like, I should have tightened the mains, but you should have noticed I didn't tighten <laughs> yeah. the mains. Like, I was on the first lap. I, I, yeah. I'm not looking at the, ga- at the there, oil pressure gauge yeah. on the first lap. There is sort of this, this sort of fun factor that only, I guess, you know, being, being the... The, the rich guy, vintage guy, is that you can bring the car back and then say, I'm not sure exactly who I'm mad at yet. I'm mad at the car and the engine or whatever, so, but get it out of my sight right. and let's work on another car yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. because you've got a handful of them and then let's Play, not worry B. about that for now. And then, you know, like when you're out of town or on the road or doing a TV show, Tom will pop the engine out and be like, hey, boss, the bolts weren't tight. <laughs> no, the full bolt. Full the main, main cap bolt. Main cap bolt. I mean, the biggest bolt on the engine, right? I mean, things four inches long. It's half inch thick. Full bolt, just sitting in the pan. Okay. Brand new. And the wow. guy's like going, Not "I'm good. pretty sure I torqued them down." No. I'm like, "It's it's impossible yeah. to yeah. have it yeah, rolling, unthread, yeah. rolling There's... around in the pan if you torque them." Look at them the hardware. Down. Holy <laughs> smokes! All right, like, we'll put some of these photos it's up. It's going to make me on, feel uh, bad. Uh, yeah, yeah. On our, uh, All right, Facebook hey Chris, do we have that uh, question up there on line one? Is that guy? Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just adding Merrick. Sorry. All right, go ahead. Hey, Merrick, nineteen Coachella. Hey, what's going on, man? Up, um, by the way, I just watched uh, 24 Hour Work. Fucking loved it, man. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked that movie. Tell a friend, man. That's good. People oh, like yeah. it. What's going right, on? Um, 
No, um, I just wanted to say because like, um, I wanted to say like, what are your thoughts on like the four lightning out here in Coachella? It's kind of we kind of have like an underground truck thing. Yeah. And like, for, and like that's like the choice. But for some reason, other people would rather go with Dodge. Ah, uh, yeah. Since, and since like the four lightning isn't really around anymore, I wanted to say like, what are your thoughts on like? Yeah. So well, first question: Gen one, Gen two. Right. right. So, and I'm a fan uh, of the Ford Lightning. Yeah, and then there's the torna- tornado, the hurricane. What the hell's the other one? The GMC made cyclone, cyclone, and, cyclone and, the, and the lightning typhoon. assault. The typhoon. I, I have one of those V10 Viper powered SRT10. Yeah, right. Oh, oh right. they gave yeah. me one of those yeah. to drive around that, once. That I was like, this is ball. ridiculous. It's a burn, what it's a are we doing? I was like, talk about somebody who hates miles per gallon. Yeah. <laughs> Mine was You're can- like angry at it's miles gallons per, gallon. per mile. Yeah. Like, yeah. Is it canary yellow? <laughs> it, no, it's black. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah it's that wait, midnight wait, you get edition. The it's a, it's the quad cab. It's oh, an that's auto. only auto. Yeah, only auto. If you got the regular cab, you can get it with a six speed manual. Yeah, I got it. They they gave it to me for like a week. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like before I knew you, like canary yellow with the big long stick yeah. shift up in there, you know, with like no the tires truck stick when it came shift. back. It's kind yeah. of fun, though. It's it's kind it of is, fun. It is, but yeah. I mean, you just you just realize everyone is looking at you, going, "Why do you hate the earth?" <laughs> <laughs> Destroying well, it was a one ago, gallon at a time, and it's, and it's never like you don't have a load of plywood in the back or anything. Yeah, no, There's no. nothing in the back but a couple of beer cans rolling around. Right, right. You can't drive that car in L.A. Yeah, I no, think you would it. get like stoned or beaten or something. Like if you went to Silver Lake and that thing, I drove it through Hollywood, but it was simpler times <laughs> yeah. back then. You know, I yeah. drove the same truck that you drove off road here today, and uh, I was Merrick said, you know, he's kind of got an underground truck thing going yeah. to Coachella. I, I think every truck in LA is underground, underground. because I've, people, people are looking at me like Coachella I murdered a child. You know, it's, yeah. it's like are you crazy. So I I uh, I like. The lightnings. I'm more of a fan of the Gen One Lightning. Now I know the the speed density fuel injection system was crap, but I like that square body look on that car more than I like the Gen Two. But the Gen Two had the crazy engine, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, and and it didn't come in teal, by the way, Adam. It only oh, came good. in red, white, and I black. Can't hate the teal because uh, <laughs> you know like... the teal F150. That was like uh, the body style of the back of the day, and. And I, I mean, guys do great modifications, old school modifications on these things. So I, I'm a fan of the Lightning. I, I, I like cool. Ford versus GM stuff, especially interior, especially back then. You know, now who cares? But back then, you yeah. know, late '80s, what, early '90s, whenever. Yeah. So the Gen I, I ones mean, were like '93. There and was then the a, Gen twos were like '99. Oh, okay. There, there was a pretty big chasm between the GM interiors with the fake Allen bolts <laughs> oh, yeah. stamped oh, in the that. steering yeah. wheel and the Ford stuff back then. Ford, Ford stuff's a lot smoother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm with you on the Lightning. And, and, and I, those cars are, you know, in a, in a day and age when, you know... They didn't make a lot. Little Mercedes 190s, uh, nothings are going for 200 grand now, and everyone's kind of looking around for stuff that's affordable but collectible. Those those trucks are falling, starting to fall under that umbrella, along with a lot of new old stuff, 90s, yeah, there's late a lot 80s of 90s stuff. Cars that that come collectible starting now. to come around. Yep. So we like that choice, Merrick. Oh, yeah, and like, Brent, uh, we went to the drag strip, and every time we get a chance, it, for now, for some reason, they considered a hot rod. One's like, all right, shit. What's that? The drag strip? Yeah. You got all-wheel <laughs> drive on that, right? No. Oh, no. No, no I, rear-wheel I, drive. How which much, is great how because How many times have I tried to make them. that all-wheel drive and you've told me no? 28? Uh, probably. <laughs> Why do I think it's all-wheel drive? Because the it's Cyclone, the GMC yeah. Cyclone is all-wheel drive. Oh, and the okay. Typhoon and the Typhoon and the is, SUV the SUV. Or... Yeah, that's gotcha. the all-wheel. Like, Leno's is all-wheel drive. But talk about the the stereotypical GM interior. The GMC oh, yeah. Cyclone had that the flat red dash thing with the <sighs> with the yeah. fake Allen the bolts, great, and, great yeah, like, the, like the eighty-seven. Like I don't know. Like my I had an eighty-seven Camaro mm. and. I remember as a kid, I'm like, I'm like, where do the Allen heads don't move? What are they like? I tried. Like, I just broke three of them, and they're not yeah, coming they're out. Not going. Yeah. They're like, these are all jammed in here. Yeah. I don't understand. We got to get an easy out in here, man. <laughs> hey, do you remember the Leno Cyclone story? Yeah. He uh, he he went to go buy a Christmas tree. Well, he has the Cyclone that he bought in 19. He still has nine, it. He says it's his rainy day whatever, vehicle. Whatever. Yeah, it's all wheel drive, right? Yeah. So he's going to buy a Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. 
He tells uh, the Christmas tree guy, like, here's where you deliver it, because he's probably driving a BSA with a sidecar or something <laughs> in it. Some fire truck or, or Stanley something. Steamer or something. It's something with the top speed of 12. Right. Right. Yeah. It takes Some, 20 minutes to crank right. over. So he tells the... He tells, I, this is how I remember the story. He tells the guy, you know, deliver it up here. And the guy's like, well, we don't deliver. Or it's like, it's 30 bucks to deliver. <laughs> and Jay's like, what? 30, 30 man, bucks? <laughs> so he goes, so he like, goes, a, he like goes across the street to a used car lot yeah. or something and buys a cycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save that 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah. And then drives you. it back across the street and throws it in the back of the cyclone. Like, and, uh, that's classic. This, this was it. This, was like, it. this is like Leno Saturday. Yeah, and, yeah, that, yeah. You know. <laughs> and that cyclone that he bought in ninety four for thirty seven hundred bucks or something's worth oh, you know yeah, fifty I, grand that's a collectible whatever. car sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right we'll uh, we'll get to uh, Ronnie in a second from Corona first I'll tell you guys about Blue Apron man love me some Blue Apron number one fresh ingredient recipe delivery in the country this stuff works man less than ten bucks per meal. New recipes each week. No repeats within a year. This month, you get the spicy shrimp and Korean rice cakes, mushroom and chipotle pepper enchiladas. I love enchiladas. Mm. I got to tell you, with the enchiladas, a lot of people go a little nuts with the chicken and the beef. I go old school with just the cheese. The best, I man. Go on. <laughs> Pork chops, scallion <laughs> rice. Keep the mm. listening. <laughs> Delivery options to fit your needs. No weekly commitment, so you only get the, li- the deliveries that How you want. How do we get it delivered Wednesdays at 11? I, it's no. Here. We can't do it here because all the 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 little uh, catfish here just scurry <laughs> off with it. You know, you can drop off. Chris from- has a gleam of pride in his eyes right now. <laughs> I also love enchiladas. <laughs> <laughs> you can drop off something here, you know, like soap, and it'll it'll stay here forever. But you drop off any micro brew and any blue apron, oh, yeah. it's gone. It it just sprouts legs and goes right out the door. Check out this week's menu. You can get uh, three meals for free. Free shipping at blueapron.com forward slash carcast. It's just, it's the best, man. It works. I, I've done it a million times. I I don't cook it. I hand it to Olga, my Guatemalan nanny. I just go make it look make like it this bad. picture. Yeah. And she makes it look just like the picture. Blue Apron. And then we save the ones like the buffalo chili. Oh, yeah. Keep those ones. We'll okay. just do those again. Blueapron.com forward slash carcast. Uh, Ronnie's got a quick question here. Ronnie, 45, hey, what's, up, what's going on, man? Uh, not much, man. Great show, dude. I didn't even know you did this show. Well, this now we're awesome. here. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. It's new. <laughs> I know. Eight, Eight years. years. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Um, you, you know, I, I'm thinking back to the days because we're sort of close in age, and I used to be out there at Riverside Raceway when I was a kid before they turned it into a damn mall. Um, yeah. But the thing, the thing is, dude, that a lot of guys like you, and I hope you don't think I'm busting your balls and trying to be a jerk, but... Guys with money, sometimes they skip steps when it comes to racing. Yeah, and that's what we do. Like, that's why you want to. That's what you want to skip steps. <laughs> that's at what the, the money's for. That's, that's what, like when you fly <laughs> private, you yeah. don't have to take your belt and shoes off yep. and stand in security line. Like yeah. the whole point of getting rich is skipping <laughs> steps. Skipping steps. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I should be with a fat chick, but I'm skipping up to a hot chick because I'm that's a rich right. guy. You want to skip as many yeah, steps as funny. you can, Ronnie. But go ahead. Sorry. I know. But what I'm thinking, though, is for you, it's really not working out for your racing, dude, because I you listen to you talk on your... Hmm. Well, I hear you on your other shows, and you're you're sort of like a mid-pack kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, well, I'd go, go on. Go <laughs> on. Yeah. Um, you're not winning anything, and you're sort of jamming up the fast guys waiting for the yellow flag so you can all retighten. But what I'd like to do is help you out and... Start you with go karts, get you to shifter karts, and then move you right and, and get you in the legends class. I think that's where you're supposed to be. Well, I agree with you. I'm a legend. Uh, and now, as far as the, the best call as, ever, I know. <laughs> as far as the vintage racing stuff goes, it, it kind of depends what we're driving. But I'm I'm a little bef- in front of the mid of the pack for the most part. Yeah. Got the goddamn uh, Rolex Cup one year in the, right. in the Roadster. You can't get that running yeah. mid-pack, but right? The Roadster's about as fast as a go-kart. <laughs> That's right. It's a shifter yeah. car. But talk about the classes, though. I mean, you're running everything from 190 horsepower to 800 horsepower, so it's... 
you know. Well, the thing about the fast cars, like the tur- two frame turbo Newman cars, is you're not going to beat Bruce Kenapa and his super dialed in 935 at Laguna Seca. Well, that's the thing is they put multiple classes of car on the track at the same time. Well, and time. you're running different year technology against different year technology, right? Y- yes. And you did win the pro celebrity race twice. Twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, and hey, then, screw you, you Ronnie. <laughs> and and <laughs> yeah. if I remember correctly, the first time ever as a celebrity and a pro, right? And then a pro came yeah. back. Yeah, screw you, Ronnie. Uh, <laughs> I just podiumed in a Trans Am yeah, race. Just podiumed in Trans Am. Your timing is horrible. <laughs> well, and, and what kind of called called last week? <laughs> Two weeks ago. <laughs> and, and doesn't it play a role? I, I would think especially in in my world, if I'm running in there in a car that can't be reproduced and, and can't be fixed readily, you know, or quickly, I, I'm not going to go up there and rub up against the guy in the in the million dollar Bugatti or whatever. I'm not. Well, I'm just not doing that, it. That's the thing. We've had those conversations as well. If you're running around a track in a really nice car, that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. But the guy next to you is in a two point four million dollar car. You, you, yeah, you tend you to want to back a off a little bit, right? You want to. Yeah, off well, off. not to mention the fact that if you do hit, I've been put on probation <laughs> for <laughs> waving a guy in a Roush yeah. Mustang around me and then deciding yeah, I, I, I didn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind. I was well, just pointing where I was going. It wasn't so much <laughs> about him. It was like I decided I should go ahead and apex this yeah. corner as long as we're here. But, and I, I ignored the waving around part. But but if you make Maybe con- Ronnie is right. If you make contact with people, you don't get to come back for 13 months, you know. Yeah. But I agree. You know, Ronnie, there's there's many different approaches, but you know, I just want to go out there and have fun and and drive a variety of cars. And uh, you know, you drive a variety of cars. You're not going to get that quick in any one because you keep jumping out of one and jumping into uh, yeah. another. But uh, I, it's fun I, though. I would say, look. We got a trophy case with a couple of trophies and one on the way from uh, last weekend's activities yeah. or a couple weekends ago, and uh, we're doing all right. But that- don't hmm. you think you would be a lot lot better off, though, if you just, like, focused on, like, if you got in a Legends car, here's the thing, man. You can bang you can bang them up. You can do all that stuff, and you don't have to drive like a big it's push. Not, it's, not, the, it's not getting in a uh, Legends car. It's picking any one of the cars that you have and running that six times in a row. And actually know, going testing and going and well, doing this. Well, testing's not going to happen. Exactly. But that's, I mean, know, to, yeah, to get the level that Ronnie's happen. talking about. Well, yeah. listen, oh, Max Pat, if you pull up the top of, like, you know, Laguna Seca and a B-Sedan race um, from a few years ago, nobody drives like a puss in, in those races. Yeah. I mean, they're on it. I mean, they're can- on it, and they're bunched up, and they're bumper to bumper, and they're, they're, they're doing the best they can not to hit each other, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. do hit each other. Also, somebody should email Ronnie a picture of the trophy case. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, and Ronnie, I can tell you this. It's got more than one in there. <laughs> Ronnie, as a, as a mere civilian... Like there. <laughs> Ronnie, I'm a civilian like you, and I, I don't. I certainly don't understand the road racing aspect coming from the world that I come from. And I was at Willow Springs, and I can tell you, not to be a, a ass kiss rodeo or anything, but I, I Adam can drive. There's there's no doubt about it. I saw some of the uh, the fastest guys. You know, our driver Tyler, um, he's a world class driver, and. Uh, you know, even though they were in different classes, they were on the track together and watching the lines and the apex. And, and Adam, uh, you know, figured out ways. He was much, much faster in eight and nine uh, than the other guys. And, and watching, uh, you know, where he was making up time and learning as he went, he, he's, a, he's a driver. The guy you can know, wheel a car. cool move of the race award. Yeah. Come where's on. Your, yeah. Listen to Jason. He's a genius, this kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah, but that... Let, That's not the B sedan you're showing that, Chris. Ronnie's but got anyway. your car. Dude. Yeah, go ahead. All right, Ronnie, yeah, one uh, more. Yes. And uh, here's the thing, though, because see, you've got all these cars mixed up in one race. It's sort of like a bunch of jackballs out on a golf course with different <laughs> handicaps. Because it, it doesn't, you've got to all be in the same car, Corolla. And it's like with the good old days when you used to do the Long Beach Grand Prix. Those were that's real racing, man. Everybody's got the same thing, and you know what's right, going on. But don't. But the here's the, the, race here's the thing. But here's the thing, Ronnie. Uh, uh-huh. I'm, I'm trying to show you the dis- the respect that you've never earned. But I will say <laughs> this. I will say this. 
Yeah, you could do. I I did win some stuff, buddy. You you could. You could. (laughs) Finishing a pig's trough at Farrell's is not what you call a legitimate victory, Ronnie. And besides, that was in the mid 70s. Now, listen to me. You can't hang your hat on that 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 past victory. Was that a timely feral reference? That's a very timely feral. This place it's been, it's been gone for twenty eight years. I have rung the bell at feral. They used to they used to sell a lot of ice cream. All right, here here's here's my here's my point. All right. We enjoy motorsports and not just racing. If it was just racing, I'd do a Miata spec series. We love getting out onto the track with the Momo 935 that ran at Le Mans yeah. in 1982 with with Ferrari 512 boxers that don't even they're not even that quick on the track but they got a flat air cooled or water cooled uh, flat 12 in them. They make a crazy sound, you know. They look uh-huh. amazing on that track. 935s, Decon Monzas, Roush Mustangs and Capris, Zeke, Paul Newman, Zeke are all out on the, this, yeah. this great candy shop of cars. Like, if you're seeing what's pulling out onto my grid, it's one just bitchin' wet dream after the next. <laughs> and then, you, like I said, vets, decons, Monza's nine thirty five from fifty thousand dollars to five and a half million, ten million dollars. It's awesome. Yeah, and Porsche RSRs, Porsche nine thirty fours, nine thirty four and a half, nine thirty five, nine thirty five Ks. You know, just <laughs> crazy, and all making a different sound, all with a different. And then you know, here comes a nine thirty five. CSL Batmobile BMW yeah. that you know Posey and cars. Hans Hans Stuck drove and some M1 Pro cars mm-hmm. done up in the M delivery mm-hmm. livery and you're like Jesus Christ 45 of like the coolest cars Everyone on with a great story every Holy car's crap. got a great I, story I didn't realize this but what you're doing is actually when you're sitting around with your buddies and your buddy goes who was better all right was it Bob Lanier or was it Shaq you know right. or who you're actually Putting them up against each other, which you could never do today. It's an all-star you know, race Le- of is cars. Le- LeBron James better than Magic Johnson? Well, we'll never know that. No, but y- you will know. You know, look at the lap times. Or you're you're actually doing that right there. No, live. you do. Like when you get out there, you go, oh, okay. Here's what the M1 Pro Car does versus the Roush Mustang versus the. You know, you got to look in your. You look up in your rear view and go, is that a 935 coming up on me or is that a 934 <laughs> or an RSR? Like, and you, you do get the re- versus the decon Monzas. Uh, like, yeah. you get a real sense of who's doing what and what their, those cars are capable of out there. And it, and it is interesting. That's like, crazy. It, it's fun. And, the sound that the pro car, the M1 pro car makes with the naturally aspirated straight six versus the decon Monza with the big fuel injected V8 versus the 935 with the turbo, totally different sound, yeah. totally different yeah. Oh, environment yeah. Yeah. beast. You know, yes. but in, and that kind of stuff to your point on those cars, again, all those cars are amazing to race against, but. When like we go up to a race weekend or a Monterey weekend or something, you're talking about forty, fifty, maybe sixty minutes on the track, and the rest of it is going around and seeing the cars and it's seeing an the event. other cars oh, race. It's yeah. not, it's not just a and, race, like yeah, you said. Expect me out the more cheapest, than that. easiest I mean, racing. It's it's awesome that you can go out there and race against those cars. But even if you weren't racing, we'd go to that event every year. It was Absolutely. Just, like, we would Before just I raced, go. we'd go there, and you want to walk through. And when you get to the BMW section, you see the you see the Batmobiles, and you'll see the Group Five and the Group Two car, and you'll see the the, the M1 Pro cars, and then you get to the Porsche section, and you'll see the RSRs and the 935s. You'll see the difference between everything, and then you get to like the you know the crazy one-off stuff, some of the Ferrari stuff out there, and it's just oh, definitely you wouldn't want to be looking at the same car. Yeah. And it's just part of the greatest car show on earth, really. And the racing's part of that whole weekend, really. It is. I, but you I know agree. what? Even even you guys, we were all up at Willow Springs together. We we walked around. I don't know. Every day, we went up there and looked at all the vintage cars and came by your cars and saw the your Camaro for the first time and saw that Lamborghini we talked about for the first time. Like 
We just, just love people, race cars, right? Yeah. yeah. It just cars are cool. You're I gonna agree. Look at them. And you, uh, so Max Pata, Laguna Seca, B Sedan race. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. kind of a, I, four years ago. So right. it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't for Monterey weekend. It was just a B Sedan race. Uh, I said B <laughs> Sedan goofball. Yeah. No. All right. The point is this. I also uh, take umbrage and offense to those who think, who do that like, oh, these uh, guys doing their vintage races, they're just out taking their little show pony for a walk and then putting it back into its stall. Uh, those guys no. are flogging the shit out they of those beat cars. The crap out of those they're cars. going at it hard, and we've seen plenty of carnage out there to back it up. Yeah. And look, yeah, some of the guys running the back are just out there for the weekend. But the the first 12 guys... Oh no, they're they're going. They're going. They're going, and <laughs> they're, they're going, not that yeah. worried about their their equipment. I was yeah. blown away by that. I was absolutely blown away by that. Um, well, I would have been driving the five ten in this one. Oh, maybe let's we'll see. I'll we'll see. <laughs> uh, there's the uh, there's the. Uh, yeah, we're just watching me go around the stupid track in a, in a 610. <laughs> Something flew up and busted my Ooh. windshield. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, that was Steve Link's. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Somebody yeah. locking up we, some We tire. know which car it came off of. Yeah. <laughs> Link, we know Link's, now. Five, <laughs> Link's 510. Something broke in his axle and it just flew up and busted my windshield. That's part of his strategy. He yeah, threw yeah. a GoPro at you. Got him. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll tell you about uh, Geico, man. Hey, you need insurance. Forget about the track. You need insurance for the street, man. Save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance, and uh, all you got to do is go to the computer, fire it up, go to geico.com, 15 minutes, could be saving 15% or more on your car insurance. It's easy. It's quick. It's simple. It's Geico, man. And again, you don't have to go out, wait in line, or get in the car, do anything. Just hop to your computer. Go to Geico.com, spend a couple minutes, and see just how much money they could be putting back in your pocket at Geico.com. All right. uh, Us, uh, we'll keep you posted on all the events and stuff that we have uh, coming up. Me and Dennis Prager, No Safe Spaces. You can check that out on iTunes and Amazon. Currently number four on the Billboard comedy chart, so yeah. check that and out. Number one on iTunes. And number one what? On iTunes. Yeah, you're number one on iTunes. Woo, write that down for later, man. Take that, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke yeah, it's it, Ronnie. That's another trophy for that case, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, there's no category for shifter carts on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Safecraft.com is where you can go, and you can find out all about the equipment and all about the innovation and all about the stuff that's right for you, whether you're you're going vintage, whether you're going new, safecraft.com is where you go. Uh, Shift and Steer, that's uh, Matt's podcast. You can check that out on uh, Podcast One and uh, our uh, adamcurl.com and all that kind of good stuff, too. Thanks, guys, man. This was fun. Yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a lot of fun to be able to talk to fellow car guys, and, and uh, we appreciate having yeah. us. Yeah, well, we're going to go look at some cars right now. Go look at some cars. So, until next time, it's Adam for Pat and Jason and Matt, the moderator, saying... Keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. <laughs>